Okay, Jennifer, as you know, I just spoke with Jeff Smith from IBM, yeah. who reflected on what's going on in the, the tech industry. Um, and I'm curious to understand your experience um, in the banking industry. Um, so could you, let, let's just start by you talking a little bit about how the banking industry is changing, especially with advances in technology. Sure, so if you think about how um, you interact with your financial institution or bank, um, there's a growing expectation for people to have very real-time interactions, very rich experiences with their bank, and for their bank to be able to anticipate what they need based on what they see of how their customers are using their transactions. Um, and really what we decided was we want to use technology as a competitive differentiator for us. Um, but the only way to really be great at that is to really transform the way we were delivering our innovation and services for our customers um, and, and really reshape ourselves as a technology company. So over the past few years, we've made uh, a big shift towards agile, um, moving away from waterfall and really lining up our teams in more of a DevOps model so that we can hire thousands of software engineers and really take the ownership of de developing and delivering our own innovation. Um, and really moving to more of a cloud first uh, mentality for how we're doing our software development. So it's been a real transformation for us because we really feel like that's the only way we can deliver those rich experiences for our customers that they are frankly expecting these days. Yeah, great. So um, then how do those changes in what you're delivering to the customer affect that the way affect the way that people at Capital One, the employees you've got, um, work, how yeah. work is organized, how information is shared, and so forth. Yeah, in a lot of ways, but I think um, I'd probably pick two of them. Um, one, when you move away from waterfall into agile, there's a high degree of interactivity and collaboration that agile teams need in order to be effective. And so what we saw was, um, as we made that shift, having the ability for teams that may not be co-located, that were maybe geographically dispersed, um, to facilitate that level of collaboration and interactivity is really important. And uh, I think Slack's been really helpful to us um, to foster that. And they want to be able to communicate with each other in a way that's genuine and authentic to their team. Um, and so not necessarily using email and other tools, but having that real interaction that makes them feel like there's a culture to their team and humanity to what they're doing. Um, so I'd say, you know, really the workforce changing for more focused interactivity and intense collaboration. I see the other thing that's not just specific to the way we're doing software development, but just in the workforce in general, um, is as people are more comfortable interacting with technology in their personal and consumer lives, the expectations have risen for what um, we provide to them from an employee capability when they come to work. And I think gone are the days where you could say um, enterprise technology cannot be as modern and, and experience rich as what they're experiencing in their personal lives. So it's really changed the focus for how we deliver our employee experience and that goes from just the workspace design, like how we actually um, you know, manage our physical workspace, the tools that we provide our employees, so that they can feel that same sense of community and interactivity that they have in their personal lives, but when they come to work, they have an experience that's very similar. Yeah, great. So can you say a little bit more about what these changes are in collaboration? So you said there's more interactivity and more intense collaboration, but what does that actually look like? Yeah, so I'd say, you know, like, for example, when our Agile teams are getting together, they want to be able to interact with each other over video. They want to be able to pull down the um, artifacts that they're working on and collaborate on them together. So it's a real integration of technologies um, for people to be able to not only work on something together, but do it in a way where they feel like they're all together in one location. Mm -hmm. So this intersection of collaboration and, and video and um, you know cap the capabilities to allow them to converse and work as a team are really driving, I think, the integration of tools in the workplace as well. Yeah, great. Um, so you talked a little bit about the expectation uh, right. that, the, that the workers have um, of their workspaces and tools. Um, how do you balance employees' expectations with the needs of the business? Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a tough one. I think it's a little bit of an art, um, you know, when we're constantly having this change of technology in the uh, world and what people are expecting and how we actually, um, you know, make those tools enterprise ready. Um, so we're, we're really looking for um, understanding how people are using technology out in their personal lives and looking for opportunities where we can bring in those technologies and make them enterprise ready and make them um, you know, scale to enterprise use. And I think as we look at tools, we, we pilot and proof of concept them um, and then bring them into the workforce in a way that we can test out how it functions in the enterprise, because oftentimes the enterprise needs are a little bit different than what people are doing in their personal lives. So it's a constant like, you know, 
try and learn and see how we can um, you know, make things very successful in the enterprise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you also mentioned um, the importance that it be genuine and mm -hmm. authentic. Right. What does that What does that mean? And, and can you give me some examples maybe of yeah, what that looks and like? I, and I actually, I think, you know, a lot of times when people are doing communications like via email, there's a certain formality that you feel that you need to have when you're writing an email. Um, I think when you l use a product like Slack and, and teams are collaborating in that way, they can just be themselves, right? So mm -hmm. if the team is used to talking in, with certain slang or there's a way in which they communicate, I think there's no formality to the tool. Mm -hmm. And so people can actually just be themselves and interact the way they would, just like you and I sitting together in a team and working, right? So mm -hmm. I think um, there's, a, there's a need for it to just be fluid and kind of transparent and seamless to the teams as they're working so that they can kind of get past the formality and get down to the productivity and innovation that we're expecting of them. Yeah, great. Um, so with regard to technologies that are you know, driving these expectations that your employees have, yeah. what do you see on the forefront? What are you sort of planning for? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, we've got, there are a lot of technologies available um, for us in the workplace, but what I see this going towards is um, really having those things work together in a more harmonious way to provide a really rich experience. So I think of the day where I can wake up in the morning and look at my calendar and go to my you know, workplace app and it will tell me, look, Jennifer, it looks like you're getting a really late start this morning. The parking deck is already full. So you may want to take the metro in. And then when I get there, um, you know, based on what I've already got calendared, it knows that I'm going to need to reserve a desk. And so finding a desk where it's close to uh, where I need to work, me being able to um, converse with technology and say, hey, I'm going to need to meet with someone. Can you please book this room for me in this place? So it's really um, now, I think, maturing. We've, we put all these uh, various capabilities in place, but how we actually seamlessly integrate them in a way that the workplace sort of comes alive yes. um, and really supports people throughout their day-to-day -day work in a way that makes them feel like everything's just integrated and it just happens so easily. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of looking forward to the day where we can use the... Um, the information about people, how they're using the tools, um, apply machine learning um, to some of this, and have more advanced analytics to help mm -hmm. deliver that experience that we give to our customers, but to our employees. So it's a very rich and um, very, very much integrated experience at work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so some people um, would argue that millennials are different. To what extent um, is what you're talking about really driven by the millennials in the sure. workforce? Um, and to what extent is this just pervasive across yeah, the workforce? I think it's a little bit of both. I think for sure um, our millennial uh, workforce is definitely bringing about some change in thinking for how what sort of capabilities we have in the workforce. Um, but I also think that as we are um, evolving and deploying these capabilities, they really transcend generation. They are uh, really applicable um, to the entire workforce, no matter what generation they're in. I mean, everyone wants to be able to feel like they can collaborate easily, that they can work um, in a genuine way with their teams, that there's some humanity with the way in which they do their work. And so I think the millennial workforce is helping us think differently about what technology we make available, but I think the relevance of it is transcends whatever generation our workforce is in. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so I'd like to just go back to the, the general idea of, you know, these intense collaborations sure. that are happening. Um, can you give me an example of what that actually looks like um, in Capital One? Sure. Um, so I'll pick on um, maybe one of the use cases we found. Uh, when our teams are uh, triaging an incident, for example, um, you know, they're all together, um, you know, working on the same incident, but it may require um, people from different backgrounds to be participating in the resolution of the incident. Mm -hmm. And so that real time being able to troubleshoot and triage um, where people can say, you know, I've tried this, this actually didn't fix it. Okay, well, let's try this other thing. It's very intense in the moment. I mean, you can imagine in an incident situation, there are times of the essence. And um, that ability to share information and ability to, um, you know, discuss what has been worked on, what hasn't, and really drive forward the um, solution is really important. And that was a use case that we didn't exactly think we were going to see. Um, I, I certainly think our agile use cases are more um, of what we think the traditional use case would be in that intense collaboration where people are working on a product and they um, you know, are sharing design ideas or troubleshooting code. Um, and so those are the types of things we're seeing in our workforce now that we've um, really moved into this agile construct of doing work. Yeah. Great. And how much does geographic distribution, global distribution affect 
um, the way that people are working. Yeah, I think, I think it um, is impacting. You know, when your team is all together in one place and they can see each other, um, you develop this sense of community with your, with your working team. Um, when you add the um, element of geographical disbursement to it, it makes sometimes that team interaction, um, you have to exert more energy to develop that team, that sense of team. Um, and so I, I definitely see that uh, having the capabilities where people can interact more real time and where it's not formal helps um, sort of get past that barrier of geographic disbursement and allows the team to create that dynamic that would be natural to them if they were all co-located co in the same place. Um, so I think it's definitely something as we see the teams become more geographically dispersed, the need for rich capabilities to support collaboration is even more um, paramount to the success of the teams. And what do you mean by rich capabilities? Yeah, so like you want to see people's facial expressions. You want to hear the inflection in their voice. You want to, um, you know, be able to collaborate with them in a way that you were right there with them. And I think that the richness of that interaction is something really important to a team's dynamic and success. Um, and so the, the the tools that we use have to be so seamless and intuitive to people that they don't have to get over a technology barrier to be able to use them and have that experience. They can just intuitively use the tools and and really work in a team the way they would if they were all sitting together. Great, okay. Uh, so my last question uh, is really looking toward the future. Sure. Um, so what is next? What big changes uh, do you anticipate in um, work over the next five to 10 years? I think harnessing the, um, the analytics, so the data that we can mm -hmm. see on how people are using these tools, um, really being better at predicting, anticipating what they're going to need, um, I say the conversational um, interaction that you can have um, with technology, these are things that we're certainly seeing in our um, personal lives. Um, and we want to figure out the way in which to use those in the work environment so that, um, again, your, your work environment sort of just is alive with you. And it, it can predict that I always go to have coffee at this time or have lunch in this place. Hey, Jennifer, that place is really busy right now. You might want to go to a different location. And so har we've got all these these uh, various technologies in place, but harnessing the data behind them mm -hmm. to really um, understand how people are using not only their physical workspace, but the tools that we've given them, and, and look for ways to improve their day-to-day sort of -day experience. We want them to come in and not have technology hurdles with the tools they're using. We want them to come in and be their best and be productive and innovative. I think um, looking for ways to harness that analytics and then um, where there are places where we can use the conversational um, technology would be really helpful to the workforce. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so any other examples on what harnessing the analytics might look like? Yeah, I think, you know, when um, we've already started with this a little bit, I mentioned the um, parking deck example, mm -hmm. um, but I think there are, you know, a lot of opportunities where um, we have information now about how people are interacting in their workplace, and we can create an experience, not unlike the Disney experience for our employees. So when they come to work, we know um, where they typically um, will go from parking. We can anticipate that the parking garage is full. Um, we can anticipate uh, where they are going to um, do things throughout their day. So if it's I mentioned the eating example, but if we know that the, the cafes are really busy, we might suggest a different one to go to. So harnessing the analytics and understanding what you're doing throughout the course of your workday and then being able to almost anticipate what you'll need on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. is where I think we're really going with this. And so it's really maturing how we've implemented the tools and get the data from them in a way that now we can predict how you might need to interact with your workspace and make it come, like I said, come alive around you to be more of a um, really great experience as an employee. So I want to circle back to what you were talking about earlier in terms of employees' expectations sure. and, and what's coming from um, their experience with technologies outside. How, how does the use of data <coughs> analytics sort of um, blend those experiences of technology technology outside and inside the organization? Yeah, I think, I think understanding um, you know, what, what things, what capabilities or tools people are using in their personal lives, it, having a better understanding of that actually helps us prepare for what they're going to expect when they come into their work in the work day. Mm -hmm. um, and so really understanding uh, 
the, the tools that people are finding most effective in their personal lives, they're gonna need something like that when they come to work. And so if we understand how they're using those tools and how those tools are adding value to their personal lives, it actually helps us meet their expectations better when they come into the workforce because then we know, okay, well, people are really um, really finding value in collaboration and, f and file collaboration or document sharing because they're sharing pictures with their families. So they're gonna wanna do something like that when they come to work, um, be it you know, sharing documents with coworkers. So I think understanding what is going on um, in the consumer world of technology use readily applies to how we do things in the enterprise because then we can understand and anticipate what the expectations will be. Mm -hmm. And I think it prevents us from having expectation misses for people when they come to work. Right. Right. Okay. Well, thank you so much. This was so sure. interesting and gave thank us you. a lot to think about. Uh, so let's thank Jennifer. Thank you.